before making my video, I was like, um, wow, my pecan tree, I'm staring, I'm on my porch, so I'm staring at it, and I'm like, it's already budding for the springtime, and like, like just two days ago, it was still branches, there was no buds on them, and I'm thinking, my goodness, literally, it felt like it happened overnight to bud, <laughs> anyway, uh, you can, you can, you know, when these trees go through the winter, they sometimes lose their leaves, depending on the tree. And in our case, the pecan tree loses its leaves, so it looks like it's dead all winter, but really, it's just in dormant. And it's so beautiful to see the buds, the tree budding back, you know, during springtime. Um, this tree ha truly has been through many, many hurricanes, many storms, and, um, Although some of the branches might have broke off or whatever, it just reminds me of who we are in Christ and how deeply rooted we really, really are in Jesus Christ. And we cannot be broken away from him. We cannot break away from Christ and Christ cannot leave us nor forsake us. So just beautiful. Anyway, in addition to my last video about God's love and pretty much because I've been speaking on God's love for a couple of months now um, it's just where he has me and it's you know it's just where I'm at and um, <clears throat> I do have to speak on this furthermore because um, so God's love is everlasting and it's eternity it's eternal and it's unconditional and it's satisfying and it's joyful and it's so beautiful and it's him it's him it's who he is God is love the gospel is love it's you know John three sixteen for God so loved the world so um that love reigns in us. It sings over us. He adores us and cares for us and nourishes us and, you know, brings us from place to place and he celebrates us. And so it's, it's constantly. And um, when we fixate our eyes, on his love for us individually we can see through God's eyes the love that he shed for the entire world which is your neighbor right loving the, loving your neighbor um, and love is the fulfillment of the law and love is we have been perfected in love because of his love and so when we can view so it starts when we fixate our eyes on Christ because I'm gonna tell you this <laughs> I get aggravated with people I don't know about you but I do <clears throat> and um, so we are inconsistent and our love um, is temporary or conditional or um, it sometimes can be phony to be honest and so when I speak on God's love I'm solely and completely speaking on his his organic love the state of Christ what he put in us and that what he put in us as we fixate our eyes on him what it does is it outpours through us and onto our neighbors and when we um, you know um, are concentrating on his love for us and how much he forgave us and how much he adores us and we read his word and we pray and all these things and we do it from time to time individually all the time 
but from time to time <laughs> and it's personal but when we do and we fixate our eyes on him and we like yesterday I, I wrote a community post I seriously had to talk myself out of the the yucky stuff that was in my mind and it was bringing me to a discouragement and I was like wait a minute wait a minute no we are not Christ did not die for me so that I can live in discouragement no 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 Christ died for me so that I can have life so that his life can be lived through me so that he can bring me place to place it does not depend on what I think about myself because that goes up and down or what others think about me or what they think that I should do or wh what they think that I should say or etc etc you know so <laughs> it this is huge I mean I can literally talk about this for days, weeks, months, years, because God is big and his ways are really, really not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And he is higher than what we can even imagine. And we are high with him because we're seated in high places. And so he is the one that brings us comfort. He is the one that brings us encouragement. He is the one that um, feeds us and he is the one that serves us the best wine, right, <laughs> in the house because we are in God's house and we do and we can drink the best wine that he has delivered and we can go to him for everything and anything, not just when bad things are happening. We can talk to him every day, all the time. We can singing to him we can cry that is prayers you know all these things so back to loving the neighbor not everybody is supposed to be in your life and God knows that um so like there's a certain person that I really struggle with and um that person cannot be in my life because that person triggers me and it's for my own good and for my peace of mind and I when I focus on Jesus I can know that Jesus loves that person just as much as he's just as much as he loved me bringing it to the cross the cross is love it is the agape love and I can I can appreciate that he has done that and I can be thankful and have a thankful heart because of that and I can agree with God that he loves me but he loves that person and he loves that other person and he loves that other person and I can agree with him and I can love them too because I agree with God you know it's it's about respect too because loving the neighbor I respect you know, that God died for all, all of the world. He loved all of the world, died for all of everyone in the world, that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. God is not a God of wishy-washy. He's not a God of confusion. He's not a God of conditions or burdens. No, his burden is light. His gifts, he gives out freely. Um, he's always lifting his children up. He's always loving on them, always caring for them. Um, and he really enjoys spending time with you alone, individually. We can absolutely get encouragement from our brothers and sisters. We are supposed to, the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling, right? Um, the division sometimes happens um, because maybe God is dividing, but sometimes the division is happening because, um, it's the enemy's, uh, work, but God's work is higher. God's ways are bigger and 
we already know that God won. And we should not have any fear, any doubts, any, any worries, any of that. But when we do, we can turn back and agree with God. That's not who we are. And we can say, Father, I'm having a hard time with this. I don't like this person. I'm angry. Um, or this situation is bothering me, etc., etc. Whatever it may be. He will always, always do the orchestrating. It's like I can picture God taking his, his children um, and like positioning them and like moving them and like orchestrating this whole thing for our own good and for his glory. Um, he does chasten his kids. Terry made a good video today. He does chasten his children, but he doesn't beat the tar out of you. So he was beat for you on the cross. He was scourged for you on the cross. His body was mangled and bloody. And everybody thought he was defeated. But he rose out of the grave three days later. No other God, quote unquote, fake God, could ever do that. Um, so loving the neighbor, I speak on it a lot and I just wanted to kind of like talk about this part of it. It's not some kumbaya campfire type of love, hippie type of love. My mom was a hippie. She was all about yay and free and free spirit and all these different things. She was even going to call one of my sisters wildflower. I mean, she was, she, my mother actually went to the actually uh, 69 Woodstock, they hitchhiked all the way to New York. But anyway, she was going to call me uh, Albany. <laughs> and that's a different story. But it's not that kind of love. It's not our love. Now, we can love because God f first loved us. And his love is deeply rooted in, in us. So we can love. We can love now because when we fix our eyes on Christ, we can understand and agree that God calls us kings and priests. His royal priesthood. His, we, are, we are put together. We are so beautifully knitted together. Um, knitted, knitted together. I was telling... Um, uh, I don't think she would mind Sister Stacy the other day. Every time I think of that verse, I think of her because she brought that to me before and it was so beautiful. But anyway, he knits us together in the name of love. He perfected us together, holy, like I said in my last video, all, all in the church, W-H-O-L-L-Y, together. And it's so gorgeous, but we can agree with him and you, sh you should agree with him because that is who you are now you are a child of God and so not everybody's supposed to be in your life and just because you're angry at someone and all these different things you can know that God died for that person now do we grow in like maybe forgiveness and things like that yes yes we do but we are already forgiven now that person that you see that you're angry with or whatever is already forgiven whether that person saved or not saved now if that person's unsaved it's their free will to look upon Jesus and to believe the cross of Christ the blood sacrifice for them for their own lives to know that they're sinners and they, and they need a savior but loving the neighbor is not a burden it's agreeing with Jesus firstly because of what he has done and because of who you are in him. <laughs> so I just want to share that while it was on my mind. I had made a video earlier, but then <clears throat> I was in the car and I was like, eh, it kind of like, uh, I messed it up. But anyway, I'm just sitting on my porch enjoying this beautiful, sunny, uh, last day of March weather. So, um, 
I'll talk to you later, guys.